Welcome to learning about LGDs on site. In today's video, we will cover grooming your livestock guardian dog, some tools to use, and breeds that may need extra care. There are some basic tools that are recommended for grooming coats that are common among most livestock guardian dogs. The first thing we are going to start with are called undercoat rakes. They function exactly like they sound. They get below the guard hairs and pull out the dead undercoat that is being shut out. Usually you can find two tooth lengths, the one inch long tooth and the short tooth which is about half an inch long. Unless you have long coated dogs you probably only need the short tooth. You want to look for undercoat rakes with rounded off tips so you don't scratch your dog while brushing. You can see here how it pulls the undercoat right out. The rear of the dog is usually where you see the first signs of shedding. After using the undercoat rake, you will probably see a lot of stray hairs. These can be taken care of with the slicker brush. We have two different selections of slicker brushes here, a hard slicker and a soft slicker. The shape doesn't matter. The only difference is that one has squishier bristles than the other. This is a finishing brush, so it will clean out some of the dirt and loose hair and make the coat look pretty and fluffy but it will not get very deep into the coat. By itself, it's not going to help a whole lot with shedding. And also, the direction with this brush matters. You want to use it with the coat rather than against it. So head to tail, not tail to head. These brushes also work great if you have a dog with dried mud stuck to its coat. Once it's dried out thoroughly, the brush will just get it to flake off a little bit faster than it would naturally. There are also pin brushes, and these are sold almost everywhere for dogs. Uh, they look a little bit like people brushes. This one has bristles on one side and a pin brush on the other. This brush is similar to the slicker brush. It's primarily going to be a polishing brush rather than a de-shedding brush. So again, this is good for you know just, just making the coat look pretty. If you have a long coated dog or dog prone to mats, you can use a comb to remove those. There are a couple varieties of combs available. This one is called a greyhound comb. It has a coarse side, which means the tines are further apart, which is useful for just the first brush through when you want to just make sure there's no big mats or, or also on the initial breakup of a mat. And the fine side has tines that are closer together. Um, so this can be used to make sure that there's no tiny little tangles and just as a, as a final comb through of the dog. Here we also have a double sided comb and that has both a coarse and fine side. And the dog that we have with us today doesn't really get mats, but every so often she will get a small dreadlock behind her ears. To break up a mat, what we do is start by separating the hair as best you can until you can isolate the mat. So if you're wanting to try and just work with the hair that's matted. Take a sturdy greyhound comb and using the comb start at the very end of the mat and slowly but surely break it up as you work down. You do not want to cut this mat out if at all possible. So some of the bad tools that you do not want to use, a really commonly recommended tool that you hear a lot of people recommend, no accidents. Good girl. That you hear a lot of people recommend is a Furminator. Yes. Um, you do not use a Furminator on this coat type. Furminators are basically an offset version of a stripping knife, which was developed for wire coats. And LGDs do not have wire coats. They have double coats. So what happens with a stripping knife is all this gl glossy guard hair where the you know the stiff part that gives the coat its color it ends up getting stripped which causes the ends to fray which takes away its water repellent properties and its dirt repellent properties and makes it more prone to matting and tangling furminators damage the coat they will some people will tell you that they don't but they do they absolutely damage the coat they strip the hairs we actually have some stripping knives and we're going to show you a comparison between the two so we have our furminator 
and then this is a stripping knife and you just they're exactly the same thing it's just the blade is set on differently these are designed for wire coats only and you do not use them on LGDs um, you probably don't want to waste your time using a shedding blade it will pull off some loose hair but again it's not going to get underneath where the actual undercoat is like a rake will so it's just kind of a waste of energy it's not really going to hurt anything but it's designed for short coats like you'd see on a horse or a short coated dog like a boxer and it's just a waste of effort for a dog with a coat like this now there are some lgd breeds that do require grooming generally speaking lgds really don't require grooming this dog doesn't ever need to be brushed i will brush her for demos like this or to help her cool faster so they can get rid of the undercoat faster because we do live in south carolina where it's pretty hot but she doesn't actually require it for the health of her coat. She will get rid of all this undercoat herself in time. It takes her about three weeks to a month to do by herself. So the grooming is not required. She doesn't mat, she doesn't stain, she doesn't get dirty, she doesn't smell, she doesn't need to be groomed. But there are some dogs that do. Some breeds in particular, like the Commodore, for example, which is a corded breed, has very high grooming requirements. They must be groomed routinely it takes a lot of work to get that coat corded properly and in shape and then it has to be maintained. If they get wet, they have to be dried thoroughly. A lot of people who keep Commodores just keep them clipped off. They shear them down once or twice a year and they let the coat just mat and cord naturally on its own. That clipping is probably the easiest way to maintain it, but you either have to maintain cords or clip them off. They do have to be groomed. The other drop-coated LGD breeds that are less common is the Myritic Sheepdog and the South Russian of Charka. Those are also bearded breeds. They don't cord the way the Commodore does, but they do tend to mat very easily, so they do need regular brushing with combs and undercoat rakes. Occasionally you will get dogs of non-drop-coated, of non that's the bearded breeds, that are technically double-coated but that have incorrect coat quality. We see this a lot in peers. Peers are long hair, but it's not being long hair. No, no that makes them have coat problems. As you can see, this is actually a long-haired dog too. Look how big her britches are. So this is a long-haired dog as well. It's the coat texture on the pier that causes the problems. A lot of them have too much soft, cottony, fluffy hair and not enough of this nice, crisp guard hair. So their coats do mat very easily. And those dogs also do need routine brushing at least weekly, if not daily. Again, with rakes and combs to keep them from getting mats. Now, if you have a long-coated dog, particularly, although occasionally in short-coated dogs you'll have this, there are some areas that are more prone to matting than others. This dog typically does not have issues, but if your dog is to have issues, the first place to keep an eye out is behind the ears. The ear fur is softer and silkier and often longer. It also sometimes gets a little sticky from ear wax, so it's much more likely to cause tangles. The skin here is very sensitive too, so you really want to keep an eye on that because the little bitty tangles are easy to get out, but if your dog gets a big mat, it may hurt to get it out. So you want to keep your eye on that pretty closely so you can prevent major, mass, uh, major tangling. Another area that you'll get is in the britches. So the hair here is longer, so it also has a greater tendency to mat. Again, this dog does not have this issue, but it can happen in older dogs or some dogs that have been altered young. The longer the hair, the more chances it has to get tangled up and twisted together. And on the tail, this dog is obviously docked, but if she had a natural tail, the fur on her tail would be about this long. And same thing, it would have a higher chance of getting tangled. Now another spot to watch out for that a lot of people don't think of if you have a long-haired dog is they have toe fuzzies. I call these her Dr. Seuss feet. Hers do not really get tangled much, but again, it's longer hair. Their feet move a lot, their feet get muddy, so they can get tangles in these little fuzzies. Her back ones are even cuter. Look at her back ones. So long and fuzzy. But again, hers really don't tangle much. Dr. Seuss splits. Yes, we put her out. Yes. And then the last place to keep an eye out is behind the armpits, right up in here. Again, very sensitive hair or skin softer finer hair and there's a lot of movement so there's lots of hairs rubbing against each other and getting caught so we've got ears riches and tail feet and behind the front legs right in the armpit area
Another important aspect of grooming, even a dog who doesn't require it, if you raise your puppy with a lot of physical handling like grooming, getting them used to having their ears and tails and, and feet and mouths and stuff messed with, it goes a long way towards developing the right kind of relationship with your dog. We do want our dogs to bond to livestock, but they need to bond with us as well. So when you're grooming and handling your dog, it's kind of an affectionate, loving process. It's also really important, again, for teaching them to tolerate restraint. You know, if I need to take my dogs to the vet, this is not a dog who likes strangers, but if she's used to me holding her, I can hold her for the vet, and then vet visits are not an issue at all. She's totally relaxed at the vet. Another really important component of regular grooming is it allows you to ch investigate your dog for injuries. You can find ticks, hot spots, cuts, sore areas. You can tell when they're, you know, if you're cutting, checking their feet regularly and you start seeing uneven toe wear, you can tell if they're getting arthritis or if they have a soft tissue injury. Regular daily handling, even if you're not actively grooming your dog, a dog who's used to being messed with all over, you know, I can do whatever to my girl, it makes life easier for you when it comes to caring for your dog, providing the necessary health treatments that they may need throughout their lives. Now some people are shocked when they see their dogs getting rid of their winter coats for the first time, especially if you live in a really cold climate, because when they start to blow their coats, not only is it a massive explosion of hair, but the dog itself may look terrible for a while. This girl has the advantage of always looking like a movie star no matter what, but we have dogs that get big chunks of fur sticking out everywhere. It's dead coat, so it gets a funny color. It looks really dry and gross. Sometimes they look like they have mange. They look terrible. And a lot of people mistakenly believe there's something wrong with their dog. There's not, it's normal. It's just called coat blowing. It happens twice a year. The big one is in the spring when they get rid of their winter coat. And then there's a smaller one in the fall when they're getting rid of their summer coat to prepare to grow their winter coat. But all this stuff coming off, is totally normal. They'll do this for, depending on where you live, a couple weeks to a couple of months. The colder your winters, the bigger your coat blows are gonna be in the spring. And it's not a cold place down here, but we did have a particularly cold winter this year. So our dogs did get extra hair. So their coat blowing is pretty major right now. It is important, however, no matter how hot it gets, to not shave your dog. If your dog has a healthy, normal coat, they should never be shaved. Shaving actually can damage the coat permanently, but it also removes the protective qualities of the coat. She doesn't have this just to keep her warm. She has this to protect her from thorns. This protects her in a fight. If she gets in a fight with coyotes, they're gonna get a mouthful of hair, not skin. This protects her from water and rain and dirt and debris. If she gets wet, it runs off of her. It doesn't get down to her skin. If it's muddy, the mud dries and falls off. In the fall when we're out here, we have all those little beggar's lice sticky seeds. They'll stick to her hair, she'll shake, they'll fall right off so she doesn't get things tangled up in her hair where they can get to her skin and cause harm. It also protects her from the sun. So you can barely see it, but her skin is actually white. She doesn't have pigment in her skin, so she could get sunburn. If she didn't have this hair protecting that skin, she would get sunburn on all that white skin. Look at her pretty gray undercoat. And then it also actually protects them from heat. All this fluffy stuff falls out, but all this crisp long stuff stays on and it protects her from the sun's rays hitting her skin and making her body hotter. So the top of her fur will be hot, but underneath will be much cooler and there's airflow because the undercoat is gone. So unless your dog has a severely matted to the skin coat all over, you do not want to shave. This dog has never been shaved. This dog should never need to be shaved. There are a few exceptions. Um, for example, one thing that can sometimes happen is if a dog is spayed or neutered, it can change the texture of their coat. And if they're not combed out regularly, they can get very severely matted. Those dogs may need to be shaved and then started over again. Very elderly dogs are dogs who have health issues that allow them to make it hard for them to stand still long enough to be properly groomed out. They may need to be shaved just for their own well-being. And some dogs like the Commodore and the Myritic and things like that, if their coat has not been properly maintained, it'll probably need to be shaved at least once a year anyway. <laughs> Basically, 
his nails just don't wear down as much because his feet are impacting the ground as strongly. So when I go to trim his nails, he has white nails, so this makes it easier. And most of these dogs do tend to have light colored nails, which is great. Not always, but usually. If you look at it, it's just like your own nail. There's a pink quick and a white tip. It's a little easier to see probably on this one. So I'm just gonna clip off a little bit of the white. I'm not gonna go all of it, just like I wouldn't cut off all the white on my own nails. Just like that. You can see he's pretty chill about it. Doesn't bother him much. I'm using the plier style clippers. I prefer them for these big dogs because it's a fully open opening, so I don't have to worry about the nail not fitting in there because these guys have big old claws. Hang on, buddy. Hang on. Last one. No, come here. They start to get wiggly. It's usually because they want to lie down, so go ahead and let them. Let them. There you go. And you just get back to it and be very casual. Do not forget the dew claw. They all have dew claws in the front. They are not removed in Livestock Guardians. And there you go. All the nails are nice and trim. The back feet are usually not quite as long, but they also tend to be more sensitive. Otherwise, it's exactly the same deal. Good boy. Big, thick, hard nails. Another thing to look out for is if your dog has rear dew claws. Obviously he does not, he has a standard rear foot, but a lot of breeds have single or double rear dew claws and they will definitely need to be cut because they don't use them, so they don't wear, and they will grow into corkscrews if you don't cut them up. Like, can I get that other back foot out of here? So we just take it slow, don't fight with them. Now here we have a black nail. He has one black nail on this back foot here. Generally speaking, on all the nails, the quicks will be the same length. So if I compare it to one of his white nails, I would just clip it at about the same spot. But I'll give it slightly less just to err on the side of caution. They're all black. Start with little bitty bits. Kind of like you're shaving it. Until you start to see the nail change. So if you look at it straight on, and then it's kind of got a hollow section where there's some mud and dirt under there. So if I go to cut it, it's still kind of the same. When I start to get closer to the quick, that will change. And on a black nail, it's even easier because the outside of the nail is black and the inside will be lighter white. See how that's lighter there? So we have our nail plate here, and on a black nail, that would be black. And this spot right here is where the quick is starting to be revealed. It's not quite revealed or it'd be bleeding. But see how it's a lighter color? It's real obvious on a black nail. You would not want to cut any deeper than this. And like his thing is not that he doesn't want my messing with his feet. He just doesn't want to like hold one position unless he's really laid back. Unless he's just laying. He gets lazy and wants to lie down. Give me that one last little dew claw. Oh good boy. That's a good boy. That's such a good boy. And then always reward your dog. When they're young, I use lots of cookies. I like to stick peanut butter in their mouth so they're busy licking that instead of worrying about what I'm doing. By the time they're grown, they're so used to it that I can just snuggle them and that's good enough. They such a good boy. <laughs> yes. You gonna give me your foot? You gonna give me your foot? Hi, babies. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to check out some of our other videos and also click subscribe and then check us out on Facebook.